Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Beatitude number four. Welcome everybody to our Jump In series. We're so glad that you have uh, taken the time to listen to the Word of God. This is the most powerful, wonderful, greatest sermon ever preached by the greatest person who ever lived, Jesus Christ. And in this Beatitude, the only thing that God is interested in satisfying is that you hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed are the spiritually famished and insatiable desire for righteousness. Spiritually speaking, if your life is, isn't full uh, and you are not contented with God, you're not hungry enough for the things of God. So we pray that in this lesson, that God by His Holy Spirit will create an emptiness inside of us, that we will hunger for Him and we hunger for, for the things of God. Today we seldom face hunger in the natural sense. We are blessed in Malaysia. We are spoilt for food. Every corner where we live and where we work is just oozing with food. So access to food in our world in Malaysia uh, is in abundance. But in Bible times, because there, there was no refrigeration, they had to hustle for their food uh, because it could not be preserved. In some countries, we have seen on videos and photographs uh, of starvation, of natural disasters, of, of uh, droughts and floods and all those things that happen. And we have seen those pictures of people who hunger the hunger of which is described here is not a genteel hunger where you can be satisfied with just a snack. The thirst that Jesus is speaking about cannot be quenched with just a cold drink. He's speaking about a hunger and a thirst that if this, if a man goes through that, he will die unless he eats immediately or drinks. Jesus was 40 days in the wilderness and the Bible says he fasted for 40 days. And after 40 days, he was so hungry, the Bible says. And at that point, it was at that point that Satan came to tempt him. He was extremely hungry. Medical science says that when a person hasn't had food for three days to a week, his body starts to eat itself. And that's how severe hunger can cause a person's body to suffer. So he is not talking about a casual desire, momentary feeling, oh, I want to worship God, oh, I like to pray for a while. He's talking about not an emotional whim, but he's talking about an all-consuming passion for righteousness. What is righteousness? Only God is righteous. Only God is righteous because these are the, one of the attributes of God. This is his character, which is consistent with his character. What is right? He does everything right in his action, in his words, in his deed, in his character. Psalms 145 verse 17 says, The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his works. So any deviation from God in doing wrong, we know we live in a culture where people are not thirsty and hungry after righteousness, but it doesn't matter what the culture is about in this world. If we deviate from God's righteousness, we are going away from His truth. So, number one, righteousness is who Jesus Christ is. That's right. Jesus Christ is the plumb line, the measuring line for us to measure righteousness. So it's not self-righteousness, it's not religious righteousness, it is Jesus who is our righteousness. Number two, righteousness is who I am in Christ Jesus. It's who I am by the grace of God, I made righteous. Religion is man's effort to be right. But that's the beauty of the gospel. For it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, For he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, 
that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. So we are righteous in God because of Christ Jesus. Number three, righteousness is who I am becoming in Jesus. Now, positionally, we are made and declared righteous by God when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. There's nothing we can do to earn that righteousness. So positionally, but practically in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11, it says, flee those things, follow after or pursue righteousness. So it will not accidentally happen. So yes, we are positionally positioned by God to be righteous in Christ Jesus. But practically, God expects us to pursue after righteousness. Number four, Jesus is what, what he is doing in our world today. He is bringing the world into righteousness. What do I mean by that? Our world is broken. Our world is clad with sin. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2 to 14 says, Now thanks be to God, who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. He made us, he made us a savor of his knowledge by us in every place. We are a sweet smelling savor in Christ Jesus. You see, our world cannot be righteous on their own. Righteousness is put in you and I to be a sweet savour, a, a, a sweet tasting to, to, for people in the world to taste God. It's going to happen through us. By the grace of God, we are made righteous, but we practice righteousness and through our righteous behavior, we are a sweet savor to God and to the world. He says to those who are going to be saved and those who are going to die through death. And so the kingdom of God within us causes us to express that righteousness. Remember, I started off by saying, what is it to be blessed? We are blessed to expand that blessing. So let's get a definition of what hunger and thirst after righteousness is. A passionate, ongoing desire to see the righteousness of God that is in the mind of Christ to be experienced in our life, in our relationships, especially with non-Christians and to our world. So a few questions we need to ask ourselves about this subject of hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Number one, am I experiencing the righteousness of Christ in my daily life? I'm not talking about perfection. I'm talking about direction, the choices that I'm making, the kind of lifestyle I want to live. So it's not perfection. None of us are perfect. Only God is perfect. But what direction am I following or am I taking? That's hungering and thirsting after righteousness. The church is the vehicle through which the kingdom of God, the mission of the kingdom of God is being accomplished. The way the world will come to know Jesus is through the church, my friends. It's just through you and I. People with faults and failures, but saved by grace and filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to live a righteous life. So when we are passionate about righteousness, Jesus said, you will be satisfied. Nothing else will satisfy you than you being passionate about the righteousness of God in our lives and in our world and in the place that we work. When we were growing up and in Bible college, uh, still very young, very fresh, we used to sing a song at the altar when, when the altar call was given and we would go and pray. Take me, Master, break me, use me. I am leaning on thy breath. All ambition fast is fading. From your grace now give me rest. We can find no rest until we are surrendered to the righteousness of God. So what are we to hunger and thirst for? Righteousness. Not what the world offers. They will never be able to satisfy you. There are so many distractions out there in the world. 
that people say, if I have this, I'll be satisfied. If I have that, if I go here and I go there, if I lived here and I lived there, then I'll be satisfied. There will be no satisfaction. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be satisfied. So as we end this Bible study for this series, for this part, we hope you'll break out into your groups and share with one another. And again, we encourage you to share with your friends and those who are wanting to hear the word of God, a short word of God. Share with one another. Share with your colleagues and friends around you. And we pray that the Lord will bless them through this Bible study. God bless you. It's been so wonderful speaking to you again. Amen.